the Bible obviously starts with God's creation of the universe and continues with the theme of God as creator all the way through. I'm wondering if we think about the essentials, about what's, what's necessary to be believed, what's necessary to be said. First of all, I wonder, when you're talking to unbelievers, you're talking to people on the outside who might not have really any conception of the Christian faith, what, if anything, should we, should we bring up when we're talking about issues of, of creation? Mm. Well, I think you need to stress the relationship of God to the creation. Uh, the, uh, there's a, an awful lot of folks now that are, uh, they wouldn't call themselves pantheists, but there's a lot of people when they say they're, relig they're not religious, they're spiritual, and they have a sense of wonder about the world, and they know there's more to it uh, and than just this material world, and, and they, they, they consider that a kind of spirituality. If you push them a little bit, it really, they, they, they do not believe that there was a God who existed before the universe and created the material universe uh, as, a, as a work of art. You know, uh, Proverbs 8 actually says he was delighting, mm. they, you know, uh, in, man, in humankind as he was making us. And, and so the idea that you have a personal God who makes us as a, in delight, as a, um, uh, but, but he exists before the world, he's transcendent above the world, uh, he creates the world. That's extraordinarily important. He also, the world is not an accident. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's also not uh, the result of the forces of, a, of an evil and a good force coming together, but you have a, it was all good. All those things need to be stressed. And it's not usually, even where the non-believer wants to go, they actually want to talk about evolution and creation right, right away. Right. Because they, 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 believe, they, they want to talk about religion, uh, creation as a religion versus science battle. Mm -hmm. You want to go back and say, let me give you all the reasons why Augustine actually said to the, the polytheists and the pagans of his day, your doctrine of creation is never going to lead to peace and justice in the world. Mm. Because you actually believe in multiple power centers and that the universe is just a result of a bunch of violent forces coming together. And he says, so I am a Christian and I believe God made the world as a work of art um, out of love and joy and uh, he, he says that the, the doc, Christian doctrine of creation is a basis for believing that it's possible to have a harmonious, just society. I would rather push it back to things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have to say, secondly, I say, honestly, the, the relationship of creation to evolution isn't the heart here. And I even say there are at least four or five or six different Orthodox Christian views mm -hmm. of, of, of evolution and that sort of thing. Let's not go there first. Mm -hmm. So first I go to the doctrine of creation, the relationship of God to creation. Then I'd rather take them to Jesus and just skip that for the time being, though I know there's some people who would say, no, they, you, you, you've got to give them the, the, the right mm -hmm. view of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and following on that, uh, when a, a skeptical, intelligent unbeliever is talking to you, he, as a Christian, he... he he probably assumes that your view of creation is an intellectual liability. Right. And right. so what, what, I right. Wanna, what I wanna do is say, no, it, first of all, I wanna own that. No, I actually believe this is true, and I think it's important, and I think it's compelling, and that's part of what Tim was just saying. How, why mm -hmm. is this compelling? Because my view is actually more compelling than your view yeah. is, skeptical, unbelieving mm -hmm. friend. You know, I've got a more compelling view. And then to say, and we don't think that Christianity and science are actually in conflict. And, you know, there are a lot of ways that you can go about doing that. One is to say, really, Protestant Christianity very much laid the philosophical foundation for, for the rise of science Modern as science. we know it today. Yeah. So I, I think you want to get at those kinds yep. of things when you're talking to unbelievers. Well, I also think that there's a place for saying, I don't know. Uh, there are all sorts of questions. Well, how does, how does Genesis intersect with quantum physics or whatever the person's uh, interested in to say, I don't know uh, exactly how that, uh, how that relates. What about within the church? I mean, Tim was mentioning you have five or six Orthodox Christian views. Um, mm -hmm. When you're working together and we're in a church or we're in a ministry, what are the essentials uh, in terms of these are sort of the boundaries of what we all have to agree on when we're talking about creation in order to, in order to recognize one another as uh, Orthodox and as uh, teachers within the church? And I want to emphasize at least three things with folks. One is creation ex nihilo. Mm -hmm. Another is the goodness of creation. And then another is the special creation of Adam and Eve. 
Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you why. Um, the creation ex nihilo. Now, as, as you know, that's debated even amongst Christian scholars, the status of that in mm -hmm. history. But the reason why is the creator-creature distinction is the foundational distinction of Christianity with mm -hmm. regard to the doctrine of God and the doctrine of everything else. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't have a God who has brought everything else into, into being, you've got a very different kind of theological system mm -hmm. than Christianity. And so creation, God being the cause of everything else, God not being a part of the created order, the created order not being birthed out of God, but the created order spoken into being by God. And you don't even need bara in, in Genesis mm -hmm. 1 for that. All you need is, in the beginning, God, mm -hmm. so that God is the cause of everything else. That's hugely important in Christian theology. The second thing, the goodness of creation. You know, the Genesis 1-1 solved the Gnostic controversy. The, the Gnostic controversy was about the goodness of creation. And the church fathers went back and they, they, they read Genesis 1-1 that God had created. And then they read the end of Genesis 1 where it said everything was good. And they said, well, that's it. Any mm -hmm. theological document that claims that the creation is not good is not orthodox. Mm -hmm. That was it. It was out. Mm -hmm. That and Hebrews 1 solved the whole Gnostic controversy. So the goodness of creation is hugely important from a Christian standpoint. And then the special creation of Adam and Eve acknowledging Adam and Eve as the fountainhead of humanity and the federal headship of Christ of, of Adam so that you have the Adam-Christ parallels of the Gospels. Those are the three things that I want to start off with. Yeah, I would actually think, though, the first two things you just mentioned, I would want to talk to with a, with a non-believer. Because mm. that, to me, is what I mean by saying, what is the relationship of God to the creation? And, and, and they're also quite, um, that's quite attractive, I think. Mm -hmm. Because you could really say, uh, just as Augustine said, that the polytheistic approach was that the universe is a chaotic uh, field of, of vying power centers. Actually, that's what the modern secular view is, too, that there's no love behind the universe. There's no, um, uh, it, it really wasn't a work of art. It really is just, it's just about power. It's not about love. It's about power. It's, it's how we got here. Uh, nature red in tooth and claw, mm -hmm. and that's all we are. So how do you build a society of justice and peace when you say, well, nature is really all about power? I, I think that's where I go with a non-Christian mm. first, all that. With a Christian, I do go to Adam and Eve too. I would say, look, there are a lot of different understandings of how old the earth are, uh, how old the earth is, and there's a lot of different understandings of what the days are in Genesis 1. And, I, uh, and, and to what degree evolution was part of how God created things. And I would say there are several gradations. When I mm -hmm. say there's four or five or six approaches, there are. But I said where I would stop is, uh, the, is with Adam and Eve. And I would say not only was there an actual Adam and Eve, otherwise I do not understand how the Pauline understanding of salvation works. I just don't know how Romans 5 works. But I'd even say, look, I know what my Christians who are scientists tell me, and that is they say that all human beings were not genetically related to a human couple. That's right now the consensus. I, I'll be honest, I'll just say, they say that's not the consensus. There was a little group of people somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa, and that's where everybody came from. Um, but when I read the text, I, I look and it says, it sure looks to me like it's saying that God created Adam and Eve Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't just uh, adopt a former, you know, human, you know, a human-like being and adopt and put the image of God. It doesn't seem like that's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. It says it created out of the dust of the ground. And, uh, and I do think in the end, even though I could be wrong in reading that text, I feel like I've got to re have my reading of the text correct my understanding of this, what the science says. Yeah. I mean, in other words, the sci both, the, the, the science is a way of telling me truth. And the scripture is a way of telling me the truth. But if they are clashing, even though I know the science might show me that I'm reading the scripture wrong, and that has happened in the past, mm -hmm. where the science came in and said, "Are you really reached? Do you really think is is it really? Does the Bible really teach that the Earth, that the, the Sun revolves around the Earth? Yeah. It, see, mm -hmm. so it's not po it's impossible for the science to make you ask, did you read the text right? But if you go back and read the text and you come to your conclusion as far as you can." say before God, I'm trying my best to read this as I think what the scripture says. Right now it says to me, no, there's an Adam and Eve and everyone came from Adam and Eve and they were a special creation. Mm. 
And so even though I don't have an answer to my science friends, that's where I stand. And mm -hmm. just like you said on the earlier questions, that gives us an enormous advantage as believers talking to unbelievers in the world because we've got a reason why there is equality and dignity for every right. human exactly. being. Yeah, that is, exactly. that's the way you go after that. And really when, when my friend Thabiti Anyabwile was, was talking to a group of folks that were denying the, the, the historicity of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and saying, you know, this, well, we came from these different kinds of, you know, varieties of people, and he said, I know where that goes. Exactly. Exactly. And so I, I've got yeah. a I've got a reason why humanity is one and ought to be treated with dignity. That's right. Well, and within the church, sometimes we we argue and spar over all sorts of controversies, as you mentioned. But I find that our biggest problem, or my biggest problem, is believing those central things. I'm a yes. creature. Yes. That I have limits put on me yes. by a creator to whom I. Uh, that's that's really often the most difficult thing. For us to submit there's to a and givenness. believe. Yeah. Right. In other words, we're created, and there's a givenness to our humanity. God gave it to us, and, and, and we have to, in a sense, submit to it. Mm. So we don't live in an age in which we like that idea. The idea is we're supposed to be able to make ourselves yeah. whatever we want to do. So, the doctrine of creation, there's bad news in it. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. what I really love the way Liggins do it, mm. there, there are ways to take modern cultural narratives and use them against them and say, look, are you for racial equality? Yeah. Well, then you should actually wish there was yeah. mm -hmm. uh, two people that we're all yeah. descended from. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you like the idea of, uh, of justice and peace in the world? And you, in other words, what you can actually do is use some of the cultural narratives against them, saying some of these traditional Christian doctrines, you should be at least open to them because they really enhance the yeah. thing you already believe. And even personally, a, a meaning and a narrative and a life. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're made for a purpose. Yeah.